All right, everybody. What a beautiful day in Stanislaus County and a beautiful day in Empire. Welcome, yeah. everybody. I am so happy here to be here, and it is truly my privilege and honor to um, just welcome all of you, uh, to introduce some of the folks, the very important folks that have gotten behind this effort um, to bring us all together today, and most importantly, to celebrate what's right here behind us that is just an absolute beautiful addition to our community. It makes, uh, makes us so proud from the county leadership team um, to see this uh, rise here in the community of Empire. So my name is Jody Hayes, and I have the privilege of serving as the county's chief executive officer on behalf of the Stanislaus County Board of Supervisors. And I would like to welcome each of them and introduce them as well. Uh, today we have uh, all five of our board members here, uh, Vito Chiesa, uh, Terry Withrow, <laughs> Buck Condit, uh, Mr. Manny Graywall, and Mr. Chance Condit right down there. I also want to take a moment to recognize two of our former board members here in Stanislaus County that were very instrumental in us being here today. Um, these types of efforts um, take a very long time to develop, um, to try to bring together uh, not just the vision for what we want to do here in the community, but how are we going to fund it, support it, and make sure that it um, uh, meets all of the expectations for our entire community. It just takes a long time to do that. So it's not unusual that we have some other board members from the past to thank because they were very instrumental in us being here today. So I first want to thank uh, former board member Bill O'Brien. And also Kristen Olson. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Kristen, very much for being with us uh, here today. And um, we have a few other folks that uh, some of our elected officials or other folks that have been instrumental in getting us here today that I just want to recognize. I think I saw Sheriff Dirksy around here. Sheriff, are you still back? There he is. He's in the back. So wave to the sheriff. There you go. He uh, took some time out from going out and busting all the cannabis fields to join us today. Thank you very much, Sheriff. Appreciate all your hard work this last couple of weeks. Um, I don't think, uh, I didn't see our school superintendent, Scott Kuykendall, join in, but I know that he sends his regrets of not being able to be here as well. Um, I want to check and see, do we have our Empire School District uh, superintendent and board, uh, David Garcia? Did you make it here? There he is, David. Welcome. <laughs> and I want to check and see if we have some of the board of trustees from the Empire School District here as well. Do we have Loretta Stein here? Loretta, there you are. Oh, we're all together in the back there. Carol Dovici, Carol Dovici, there you go. And Doug Bentley, Doug, are you here? Okay, we missed Doug. Um, Patricia Schaefer, Patricia, there she is. And Nicholas Bravaro. Nicholas, did you make it? Okay. Um, uh, I also want to recognize, and we're going to do some very special recognition for Mr. Bob Dittman and his family. I think we have the Dittman family here. So welcome. Thank you all for being here. There we go. Down in the front row, as you definitely should be. OK, uh, we don't want to miss out on recognizing some very important folks that um, helped us uh, form the original vision of this, and that would be those individuals at the Empire Community Hall Association members. So do we have Carolyn Hill and her husband, Bud, here? Do we have you? There they are, right there. Do we have Henry Howard and his wife, Marge? Were they able to make it? There they are. And Luis Daniels. Luis Daniels, here? OK, not able to be here. The, the Empire Community Hall Association uh, actually donated the land for this project. And for those of you who are really familiar with Empire, you knew what this used to look like and just how incredible it is, the transformation. But it all starts with that generous donation and with the work that was done with the Community Hall Association. And as I recall, going all the way back to Supervisor Bill O'Brien, who helped us figure out how all of that would work. So thank you all very, very much. Another round of applause for you. We also uh, really rely heavily on our municipal advisory councils here in Stanislaus County, and we have our very own Empire Municipal Advisory Council, some of the members present here today. Do we have Chris Nunes and Rafael Rodriguez here? Oh, behind, oh I'm sorry. Yes. 
snuck up behind me there, okay? Um, and also not present, but very instrumental in this was uh, Fabian Tamayo, who's unable to be with us here today. Um, I think I saw our county counsel, Tom Bose, come in. He's our lead attorney, and oh, there he is right there. And you know, uh, you don't go anywhere in life without a really, really good attorney. And uh, Mr. Bose and his entire team in the county counsel's office do a fabulous job. So, Tom, thank you for helping us get here today. Um, I want to recognize. Um, the team that is going to operate this and put our vision to life, and that is our Stanislaus County Librarian. We have a wonderful librarian in our community, Miss Sarah Denton. Sarah, are you here? Where were you at? There she is, right there, okay. And um, with Friends of the Library, President uh, Luis France. Lois France, Lois France. Where, we... Oh, right there, She's not, she didn't want to raise her hand. There you go, Lois. Okay, okay, so, um, uh, there are a couple of uh, key individuals that have also um, uh, kind of moved on to, to new chapters in their uh, careers here with Stanislaus County, um, but absolutely this doesn't happen without them, and I just personally wanted to thank them very much, um, and that is uh, two of our assistant executive officers um, that have shifted into a new retirement chapter with the community. They still work with us doing a variety of projects that are very, very important. But I am just so happy to have them out here with us today. Um, Mr. Keith Boggs, who's right here. Great to see you again, Keith. And Miss Patricia Hill Thomas, I think, is hiding right here at the entrance. I think we're going to have Patricia spend some time talking to us a little bit later uh, as the project manager for this uh, project. Um, I also want to take the time to uh, thank just the numerous uh, uh, individuals who served on this project team, all of our contractors, our architects, and all the others. We're going to recognize them along the way here as well, but they've uh, joined us as well. So the last thing I want to do is to just ask all of you to please rise uh, while we lead um, in a, a salute uh, of the flag here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all very much. And it's now my pleasure to turn this over to the chairman of the Stanislaus County Board of Supervisors, Mr. Vito Chiesa. Thank you very much, Jody. Great to be here today. This is exciting stuff. Just last week, I was standing with my fellow board members, our public works director. We're standing right on the bridge down here at Santa Fe, uh, right by Lakewood. And I, I like to talk about now, it's, uh, it's even easier for me to get here from the Houston area uh, to come to Empire. And it's great to see these projects come online. This project, although bridges are very important, this project is probably more important to the community. And as, as we talk about the things we do, we've been really good at building jails and other things, and no disrespect to the former prison secretary, Matt Kate here, uh, this is what I like building. This is what we like building. We want, this is going to put uh, people, this is going to put us out of business with jails and other things because we're going to teach kids early, we're going to teach adults. It's a learning opportunity that never ends. So I'm as excited as anyone uh, that this is going to come online. I will tell you that, uh, you know, as the chairman of the board, you get to come to these ceremonial events and stand up here and, and recognize folks. And, and that's the nice part about it. But COVID has kind of changed the way we've done things. And this is really our first uh, true outing in just in public. And this feels good. I hope it feels good for you too. Uh, go get your COVID shots. You know, every day we talk at our, this morning we talked at our meeting about getting people vaccinated. And I hope everyone goes out and gets vaccinated get your kids vaccinated, because we want to have more of these events. We want to open the economy. We want to open our libraries. But this is an exciting, exciting day. Uh, we do have another uh, ribbon cutting coming up on August 9th at the Turlock Library. So you have the Empire Library opening today, August 9th, the Turlock Library. And today, our board just okayed about a half a million dollars to do a maker space in the Modesto Library, something we've been working on for a long time. So lots of good things happening in the right areas. Uh, very, very, very proud of the taxpayers of San Jose County who have uh, graciously decided that uh, investing money in libraries with an eight cent sales tax and then renewing it a few years back, it's, it's made a complete difference in how we operate our libraries. I have four libraries just in my district, one in Keys, Denaire, Houston, 
and the Turlock Library that will be opening. And I just I can't speak enough about what I think is the importance of that. But it brings us great hope. As George, Re George Reeves once said, knock the T off the word can't. Everyone involved in the creation of this library has knocked it out of the park and knocked the T off. So exciting, exciting. Uh, to my colleagues on the Board of Supervisors uh, seated to my side, thank you for your support and foresight and in, uh, ensuring that the libraries and other essential services uh, are providing, uh, we are providing those services. The, the two that were mentioned earlier, so projects take such a long time. When I first got on the board, first ribbon cutting I ever went to was right over there at the pool. And I'm not sure if I was just seated or if it was between getting elected and being seated. And, and I, I was completely overwhelmed at the community support, and it was really uh, Supervisor O'Brien who led the charge along with community members, but from the board perspective, uh, just trying to wrangle people together, and it came out of tragedy, and out of tragedy comes, uh, you know, this beautiful water park. This, there was a hall sitting here, it burnt to the ground, and, and someone had thought that there wasn't value, and, and look what we have today. We've got tremendous value for the community. So, great things. Bill, I wanna thank you. You started this project. I know we had discussions early on about a library project. And then uh, Supervisor Kristen Olson took over, and she's been a, uh, a wicked supporter, uh, lack of a better word, of the library system and the maker space and the Modesto Library also. Uh, these projects couldn't get done without champions like yourself, so thank you very much. Um, so here we have the trifecta. You see the park. You see the the... Uh, the water park, the park, the water park, and here the library. What a community asset. As you come out here, this could be a reception area, but this between uh, what we have here and the school, we have a lot of synergy here for the community, which I think is fantastic. So I'm really excited about that. It's really the can-do attitude. I do want to recognize, again, the, the Empire Community Hall Association, which was started back in the 40s to serve the community. Uh, that operated out of the building that burned down. And you heard the names, and we're going to have some, uh, some prizes for you. But Carolyn Hill, and her, she's a retired county employee, and Bud Hill, who wasn't recognized as a Houston City Council member. And I forgot, Brett Silvera is out there, a serious city councilman. I, I saw him earlier. But uh, I can't say enough about the donation of this property to the county. It made this possible. I don't know that it would have been possible otherwise. And uh, Henry Howard and his wife Marge, who we recognized, and Louise Daniels. And we're going to have something. We'll bring them to you uh, when the time is appropriate. And the library, um, let's see, Imp the Empire Mac, to, to my friends to the right, Chris Nunes and Raphael, and, and Fabian, who couldn't be here with us. But without your advocacy also telling us what the community needs, uh, continuing to voice those opinions, th these types of projects wouldn't be possible. I want to thank you from the uh, board. And then today, we have Bob Dittman and his family. Bob and his late wife, Jane, were devoted champions of this community. With Bob, a fixture in the Empire Union School District, and both true champions of literacy, education, and families. Last December, the Board of Supervisors acted to name the children's area of the Empire Library in the honor of Bob and Jane Dittman. We have recognition uh, coming up in our program today. It won't, uh, we've got a pretty good story too. So even in this pandemic, we did it. Uh, I need to thank the designers, contractors, workers, suppliers, vendors, and I know that uh, Patricia Hill will be going over that. Uh, entirely done during a pandemic, and we're grateful to everyone. Stanislaus County is proud to uh, announce the completion today, and the library opens tomorrow. And as I've said every single time I've been chairman of the board, on time and under budget. I, we have not had a project, as long as Patty Hill Thomas has been hanging around, that has gone over budget. It is truly stunning when I think about all the capital projects we've built and the time and the energy that it takes to do that, to, to continue to do that, to save taxpayer dollars and bring great projects like this to fruition. So a big thank you to Patty Hill Thomas. So the 4,720 square foot new library is twice the size of the old Empire Library. It features warm and inviting spaces, children, teens, and adult areas. It incorporates a community room that opens to the covered outdoor patio for library events and community events. And potentially in the future, we have room in there for a sheriff substation, 
when uh, I know the sheriff, when I look at him, he always says, well, you give me five more deputies and we'll have a substation here. So we have to uh, uh, pump him up a little bit, but w in the future we fully expect a substation here. And it's just equally exciting to, you know, kick that tee out and say we can do. In the middle of a pandemic, when people are dedicated, like the employees of Stanislaus County, like our contractors, we can do anything. And, and I, I marvel. And last thing, I know I said something about Patty Hill Thomas and, and between her and Keith Boggs, I think about 70 years of experience is leaving Stanislaus County. And, and, but Patty Hill still has the Turlock Library, the Modesto Maker Space, and the Empire Library. When she wanted to retire, we said, you can't retire until you complete all your projects you have in the queue and maybe a public health office uh, at some point. But to think of the three jail projects that we've had, the, the Day Reporting Center, the Gallo Center, 10, 10, 10th Street, libraries. Uh, there must be 20 projects. There's probably uh, f maybe four or five hundred million dollars worth of projects that have all been led by Patty L. Thomas. I say this, you know, we, her and I always get teary eyed when we, we talk about each other, but truly dedicated servants uh, that want to make the community better, you know, there's there's not 100% of the population. So it falls on the 50% of the population that want to do whatever is necessary to make this a great community. There's number one standing to my left. So again, uh, my deepest gratitude to you, Patty, uh, for all you do. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our librarian, Sarah Denton. Thank you. Um, last year, and I checked, it was actually almost exactly a year ago, I sat in my office thinking about what I was going to say for our virtual groundbreaking, uh, the groundbreaking that we did online. I had an image in my head of what this library would look like, pulled from blueprints and wish lists and a checklist of features, which you've actually heard, but I'll say it again. We wanted a library that nearly doubled in, spot, in size. We wanted inviting children's spaces and spaces specially designed for teens. We needed comfortable seating for adults, whether they were sitting and reading or getting some work done. And we wanted a community room and an outdoor space for library programs and community events. And oh my goodness, has our project team delivered all of these things and more. I am so excited for you to come inside and see what has been built here. This facility is not just functional, and it is very functional, it is beautiful, it is inspiring, it is inviting, and it will serve this community well for years to come. This library wouldn't be possible without our partners, and you've heard a lot of these folks' um, names before, but I want to say it again. First and foremost, the Empire Community Hall Association. Without them, this would not have been possible. Um, we can clap for them, that's okay. <laughs> Um, I personally want to thank the Stanislaus County Board of Supervisors for their support. Getting libraries built is not always easy, and without the support of board members past and present, we would not be here. Um, the project team was fantastic, and I too am going to give a little shout out to our um, to our project manager, Patricia Hill Thomas, um, who makes things happen uh, under the most challenging circumstances. Um, with, with her uh, at, the, at the helm, I never wavered in my faith that this particular space was going to happen on time and, as we've said, um, under budget. Finally, I also want to offer a special thanks to the Friends of the Empire Library. You know, they, they provide generous support for the programming here at the Empire Library, and without them, many of the special things that happen inside the building would not be possible. So we always want to make sure that we say thank you to them. And I'm going to wait. Um, the poet Stuart Dybeck said that the public library is where place and possibility meet. And in this beautiful, inspiring place, there are worlds of possibilities. Inside this library, you'll see you're invited to create, learn, and discover with us. In this place, our staff, led by our branch supervisor, Diane Ramirez, is prepared to support you and your family as you create, learn, and discover, whether that's through library programs that they've designed or by assisting you one-on-one. -on -one. 
in this place you'll find collections of books and materials that will assist you as you create, learn, and discover whatever it is that you're looking for in this place, whether that's the library itself, the community room, this outdoor patio, the larger park, the water center, you're able to create, learn, and discover as a community as well as an individual. So please, do take a look around this afternoon, but come back tomorrow too, and the day after that, and the day after that. We don't want this to be the last time that we see you in our libraries. These are places for you, and we want to see you. Thank you very much, and we hope to see you soon. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Jody, Vito, Sarah, thank you for your remarks, but I'll tell you what, I'm the blessed one to work with such a team and such a community. And if I get through this without crying today, all of you, many of you know me really well, you'll be surprised, and so will I. It is my honor to join the Board of Supervisors, past and present, to honor the loving dedication of someone I consider my friend, Bob Dittman. Bob, you and your lovely wife, Jane, have given your heart to this community. Today, after I speak or cry, I'm not sure which, Supervisor Manny Grewell will join me in this presentation. And for both of us and many of the people here today, it's really personal. You may not know this, but I have the double honor, and I see David Garcia in the board in the back, hello, of having been a parent and a PTA member and a room mother in the Empire School District for my son's entire elementary and middle school experience. And I love this district, and I love this community, and I live in Modesto, but on the outskirts of Modesto. And I'll tell you, I remember meeting Bob and Jane Dittman. I don't know if you remember me from then, but you can't be involved in this wonderful school district and not meet the people that love and make this community go. As project manager, which I considered a real honor for the pool project and for this library, I've had an opportunity to work with many of you. I remember meeting the Dittmans years ago and I caught their enthusiasm instantly instantly caught their enthusiasm. Sadly, many of you may recall that three young brothers drowned in the river nearby. It was then that so many banded together to create a safe place for summer recreation and swimming. And on that day in 2009, Bill, led by Supervisor O'Brien and the board at that time, we dedicated the Empire Regional Water Safety Training Center. It's having some maintenance this week, and we said, oh, good thing, because we needed parking for today. But we have a beautiful relationship with PAL, the Police Activities League, and I live in this part of the county. And while I may not be able to go in many places, we drive around all the time. And when seeing that pool like it was this weekend, full of children and families, thank you, Bill. Thank you to the current board, the past board, for caring enough about this community. But the Dittmans are why we're talking today. Bob and your wife, Jane, and your family, you were a driving force in so many efforts. I remember being right over there and packing food boxes at the holidays. I remember pencil sales and apple sales to, ger to generate money to help operate the pool. And I always remember you leading that charge. I remember, I know Supervisor O'Brien will remember, and Raul Mendes is here. Raul, my partner in that project. Hello, our partner. Bob Dittman was the third person in the pool during the dedication in his swim trucks, the principal of Empire Elementary. And he was in with the two remaining brothers who survived that tragedy. And that truly, and I will, 
date myself, I guess, in my 40 plus year career was one of my absolute most fond, fond memories. I do too. I do too, and that's wonderful. And we're going to share some of those pictures sometime soon. So, Supervisor Bill O'Brien, my friend, it was your passion. You were undaunted that it was a tough budget time. We sought and received funding from the state legislature, and you encouraged the county to sort of take the plunge and create a safe place in this whole region for children to learn to swim and for families to enjoy water and outdoor. And if you haven't been to that pool, go by sometime and walk around and you'll see all these little um, created by children in this community, little pieces of art that are on the outdoor wall to remind us that it is about the children and the future. So um, Bob, and to everyone who knows him, you'll know what I know. He's not someone you will ever forget. Uh, led by Supervisor Olson, thank you, Kristen, I'm so glad you're here, and Matt Key, too, for sure. Um, we, uh, your board, this board, adopted a resolution naming the children's area of this beautiful new library in honor of Bob and Jane Dittman. I'd like to thank Sarah, Keith, and David Garcia back there for pulling me into this wonderful effort. It became my passion. And Jen Dittman, thank you. We've spent lots of time on the phone, and thank you for helping making this possible. I, we truly love you all. So I want to introduce Bob's family. Of course, Bob is right here. His daughter, Jen Dittman, and his son, Brent Dittman, right in the second row. His two wonderful grandsons, Kristen and Mateo, James Bates, and his son, Colin, and Jim and Rosemary Ungwe. And are you, I think I saw you come in. You're right in that row. Loving family members of the Dittmans and, and of Jane Dittman as well. It is my pleasure to be here today. And when you get to go inside, you're going to see a lasting and forever tribute to Bob and Jane Dittman. And it is my honor to introduce to you someone you know, Supervisor Manny Grewell. Thank you, Patty. We're almost the same height. Good afternoon, everyone. I don't know what it is, Mr. Dittman. Every time I come in front of you, whether it's at the principal's office or at this recognition, I get a little nervous. But uh, this is such a pleasant afternoon, um, such war hard work from staff, board members to make this a reality. And you know, having the privilege and the honor of knowing Mr. Dittman as my sixth grade assistant principal at Teal Middle School uh, has been a relationship that I really cherish and enjoy and I'm happy to call you a friend, a mentor. I've gotten to know your family over the years, uh, Jen, Brent, James, and your grandchildren, and the personal experiences that I learned from you. When you were the principal at Empire Elementary, I remember coming here for summer school to make up classes that I wasn't able to pass during regular school. So that was always an experience. But um, having this uh, children's area named after you and your late wife is well deserved because of everything you've done for this community, you've done for us as students, you've done for your family. So. You know, one of the personal stories that I'd like to share, um, you know, it's always easier as an educator or as a principal to discipline people. But it's different when you teach them a life lesson that they carry with them for the rest, for their, for the rest of their lives. So when I was in sixth grade, I, I, I'm a big basketball fan. I, to still this day, I still try to play basketball. Not as good as I used to be. Uh, but after school, Mr. Dittman would allow us to use the gym right there to play basketball. And playing indoor basketball was like the best experience, right? You felt like you were in the NBA, you get to play on the soft cushion ground. So we were really appreciative of that. Well, one day for the student store, I guess, you might have ordered some crunch bars and they were just laying there. So all of our friends, after we played a few games of basketball, we see the stack of Nestle crunch bars laying right there. So we thought Mr. Dittman was just nice and left them for us. So we started eating away. 
The next day in the intercom system, Manny Graywall to the office, please. And a lot of his friends, all our names get called and Mr. Di we get called into Mr. Dittman's office and says, hey, did you guys take those Nestle Crunch Bars? We're like, they weren't for us? He's like, no, they weren't for you. So after we clear the whole thing, Mr. Dateman, rather than other options he had, like suspending us or giving us a citation, really taught us a life lesson. He said, you know, we were going to sell those at the student store for 25 cents, but I'm going to sell them back to you at a dollar and make you work off your debt to the school. So me and my friends for the next week, cleaning up everything. Well, Mr. Dittman, 30 years later, I got your crunch bars back for you. <laughs> but that just goes to show that that's a lesson that I'll always carry with me, that it was a lot easier for him to discipline us, but teaching us that lesson is something that I'll be passing on to my kids, and that's the legacy that you leave for all of us, for this community, and that's why it's so deserving that this is named after you because when your name comes up, it's gonna be synonymous for all the lives that you've changed during your time as a teacher, as a principal. So I could not be more grateful and thankful, and I'm so happy that the board made the decision of naming this in your honor, and I'd like to read off the recognition that was resolved on December 15th of 2020 in recognition of Bob and Jane Dittman's dedication to the Empire, Empire community and their role as true champions for literacy, education, and family, the Stanislaus County Board of Supervisors acted to name the new Empire Library Children's Area in their honor. The Dittman's dedication is legendary. Their core belief that all children are capable and deserve a quality education created a community of support for untold numbers of young achievers. They led educators to understand that literacy and ac access to quality literacy, instruction, and resources are issues of equity and of social justice. Then they led educa educa educators to act on that understanding. Bob and Jane's actions have always matched their words. They went beyond the call of duty to provide support within children's homes, helping families secure the most basic needs of food, shelter, clothing, and utilities, while simultaneously promoting the value of literacy and education as a pathway towards success. Generations of Empire families have benefited from the support and the care of the Dittmans. We are forever grateful. Thank you so much, and thank you for being a mentor and an inspiration for many. This got me a little teary-eyed. They said life comes full circles. Well, from citations to certificates of recognition, I'm glad I'm going the right way. Thank you. Say something? Yeah. <laughs> I can show you how many times I've been up here. Actually, um, oh, actually, um, I wouldn't have given up anything for Empire. It's like my home. Um, how many times? And for those of you who are are people who are living out here and lived out here for a long time, realize that. Um, it was not necessarily an easy place to live. Um, but um, I, 130 Paradise, no, what was that? Across the hill here? Um, um, 
it used to be, it used to give everybody, that street used to give everybody, giz, you know, the chills. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> but it was um, how many times I got in my car looking for kids who were over there um, and weren't supposed to be in school. And I got to a point where I didn't even have to take my car anymore. I walked over there, knocked on doors, and all of a sudden kids were starting to come to school. And that was kind of the beginning. Um, and um, we tried to put as many positive things out there because we all know that um, a lot of the kids in the past have had um, very little exposure outside Empire. They couldn't tell you where the fruit yard was or what the fruit yard is. Um, they just have such a narrow perspective on life. And, um, uh, and I, I was really into doing things. Um, in fact, um, it's a good thing Bob Price isn't here, um, only because when I first got here, true story, um, there were um, uh, tons of kids. If, if my, my daughter is rubbing my back because shortly after my wife passed away, I came down with um, Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's. And I'm just starting to feel the effects of that. But it, not holding me back. Not holding me back. Yeah. But um, the, um, oh, I'll come back later. Anyway, I'm thrilled to death. I, I couldn't be happier to see all of this positiveness around empire. It's just, and there's many more people who should be here, but have passed on to other things. Betty Parker, um, who was a huge piece of getting that swimming pool, um, and others and others and others. So I'm gonna let somebody do something else. And, um, um, okay. Hi, I'm Jen. This is my brother, Brent. I just want to say on behalf of our family, thank you so much. Thank you so much for helping us make this happen. You know, I asked Superintendent Dave Garcia if I could please pay for a bench with my dad's name on it <laughs> because he started his Alzheimer's journey and I wanted him to know that we could honor him in some way and continue to help the children of the Empire community in some kind of way and for asking for um, a bench. This is the magic that's happened three years later. <laughs> so thank you, everybody. Um, you know, uh, we grew up middle class as a middle class family, uh, but my mom, Jane, she's from Hawaii and she's no stranger to uh, poverty. She used to tell us stories of growing up with no shoes and walking to school that way when she was in elementary school and of not having much food on the table. And so we really had a soft spot for underprivileged and at-risk youth um, for pretty much my whole life as I know it. And uh, my parents would sacrifice their time and give their time, their energy, and their resources to coming out here to Empire and finding kids that weren't showing up at school. My dad and my mom would go and knock on their doors and talk to the parents and say, what do we have to do to get your kids to show up at school? What can we do to support you? And um, I know my dad really changed the test scores at Empire Elementary and had a huge impact on the children there. And um, <clears throat> you know, they would find the homeless kids and we would help make meals for them and then they would spend holidays away from us sometimes to make sure that people had food that didn't have access to food. And um, you know, this is just amazing what all of you have done in honor of my parents. And I just wanna say thank you from the bottom of my heart. And um, when I asked for something to be done in honor of my dad, I thought when I started hearing some yeses, I thought, you know, my dad has two master's degrees and he went all the way through college and he did everything right. But it was really also because my mom 
paid for him to go through college and supported his journey. And then when he took his career on, she stayed home and took care of us kids. And so I thought, you know, it would be really nice if you guys could recognize her too. And so I'm really, really honored that you did. And I just want to acknowledge that and say thank you for recognizing her as well, because that's a lot of work taking care of the family. Um, so I've got a lot of thank yous, um, and I'm sure I'm going to forget some people. So I ask for your forgiveness in advance. So on behalf of our family, I'd like to thank Empire Superintendent Dave Garcia and Claudio Vecino, the Empire School District Board of, Di Board of Directors, Sarah Denton, the Stanislaus Library Board, the Stanislaus County Board of Supervisors, Super Supervisor Kristen Olson, thank you for that really beautiful letter, that lovely letter that you wrote for my parents, and also to Supervisor Manny Graywall. Um, Patty mentioned, I didn't realize it was going to be, you know, so many people here today, and she mentioned that the supervisors would be here, and I said, oh, that's awesome, maybe we can get Manny to talk, because I'm pretty sure Dad's busted him a couple of times. <laughs> so that really worked out, thanks, Manny. <laughs> um, so I want to thank Patty Hill Thomas, uh, what a gigantic heart she has. Uh, she's really championed for this to happen, and I really just want to say thank you. Thank you to Stanislaus County Pal, Alfredo Guerra, and Brett Silvera for being part of our journey and helping the children and families of Empire. I want to acknowledge Betty Parker, who was also my dad's partner in making a huge impact on lives here. I want to thank James and Colin Bates for all of your love and support for our family during the time that we lost mom and during dad's Alzheimer's journey. Um, thank you. Um, to my parents, my brother, and my children. You know, we intend to, you know, uh, make this a generational thing. Watching my parents model taking care of, of their community and loving people in need and not asking, just doing when you see that someone's in need. That's what they modeled for us. And so that's what my brother and I do in our community as well with our community work and the way that we help people. And I'll model that for my children. And so we are going to help anything that's necessary here at the Empire Library, whether it's our time, our energy, our resources, fundraising, please count on us because we will um, be doing that for generations to come if you'll have us. So thank you for honoring my parents, um, who are two people with good hearts and simply wanted to have a positive impact on the lives of children and families. Thank you so much. like to add, are there, is there anybody out there who actually went to Empire Schools? Let's see. Keep your hand up. Because, or tell me when I should. Okay. If you ever went to Empire Elementary and I caught you doing well, which could mean anything from picking up a cigarette butt to picking up other stuff, whatever it may be, and I catch you doing that, you automatically, because my, my office was right at the corner, so nothing went by, um, every, every one of those kids got a gold eagle pin, and these, this is the last I have of all those kids. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. No papers? Hands up. <laughs> no. Raise your hand if you're keeping on here. Al, Al went to Empire. I never got one as a student, but I'll take one now. <laughs> How about another round of applause for this beautiful family? Bob, you'll always be my hero, and it's just so beautiful to spend today with you. So thank you all. Thank you. So I'm back, and uh, I have a habit of coming back or not leaving. <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> um, I'm laughing. Um, I was wondering what I'd say today, and I have been doing okay on the not crying yet, although I cried when you all walked in to see you again and see you happy and healthy. And I thought about Mr. Rogers. And I thought, 
and I pray for good weather. And I'm going to admit, I did not pray for rain today. I did not pray for rain today. And I'd like to thank Mother Nature for giving us a beautiful day. And as Mr. Rogers would say, a beautiful day in the neighborhood. And it is one of those days. And so I thought, well, I'm going to do a little Mr. Rogers reading to get myself um, to be upbeat. And I love this saying of his, and I've used it many times in my life because it's easy to remember. To ultimately achieve success, there are three ways. One, first, is to be kind. And the second way is to be kind. And the third way is to be kind. So today, I am very honored to be here and to tell you about the wonderful and kind people that made this dream a reality. I always love this part of the project. I always say to my team, they're out there, I'm going to have them come forward in a moment, that the best part is the party. Even when you face claims and cost overruns and, and bids and challenges and things like that, you got to keep going for that dedication event because it reminds you what you do really matters to the communities that we serve. So we have it. We have a new, modern, safe library in Empire, the dream of many for a very long time. So I want to tell you a little bit of a story, and I'm going to get to the thank yous, and then you're going to get to go inside and see this beautiful place. My friend Keith Boggs, and I'm not going to look at you because I'll cry. A couple of years ago, he approached me and said, hey, could you get through those jails and help us with a little project in Empire? There's an old building. It's modular. I know. We built that old building in modular many years ago. And it really needs to be replaced. We don't have a lot of money. We don't have a lot of land. We don't have all those things that made me and our team so excited to have yet another challenge. We promised the supervisors, Vito in particular, that we'd get those jails done so we could build libraries. And in about nine days, the Turlock Library will reach final completion. And I hope you'll all join us, as Chairman Chiesa said, in August to celebrate. So that old library was passed its useful life. And the wonderful Community Hall Association and my own personal friend, Carolyn Hill, one of our colleagues with the county for many decades, and her husband, Bud, from Houston, it's been such a joy to reconnect you because we had a hard time finding you. We, went at, we put an APB out for the Empire Hall Association, and Carolyn knows because she got what was rather a surprise call from me. In fact, most of you have had a call from me in this last month um, about the importance of us recognizing your efforts. So I'm not glad there was a fire, but I'm glad there was a fire that turned into a library. So please, let's applaud the Community Hall Association again. Thank you. So um, my friend Keith Boggs popped up again in my life Sunday night, and you can bet that I started crying. He said, Patricia, thank you for staying with it and getting it done. And he ended that message Sunday night with these words. He said, it's just what you do. Keith, it's what we do, and it's what we do together. And we should be very proud, all of us, and the entire county organization, and all the communities that we've had the opportunity to serve. So to the current board and Mr. Hayes, my Giants buddy back there, thanks for the hat and the Giants game. We all have something on your seat for you. Hopefully, you're not sitting on it still. I'd like to thank you on behalf of our team for trusting us for what we think we do best. And we couldn't do it without your trust and your support and your love. To the Hall Association, double, triple, thank you. We love it. I hope you'll all see there's a piece of concrete right here behind Bill and Kristen. It was unearthed during the demolition. And it is from the 1950s, the Empire Twisters. And our team and the Robolin team saved it. And it's going to be on display forever here. 
to our wonderful MAC members, I remiss, remember missing the final playoff game of the Warriors. Kristen and I were out here. It was killing us. My husband was in the car listening to the game. But you hosted many MAC meetings. And I'd like to thank Erica Ignacio and Patrick Cavan. I didn't see Patrick here. Thank you both. And Erica, thank you. You've carried on working with the MAC during the pandemic. I've attended some of your meetings along with Supervisor Condit. And we're just so proud to work with you. I spoke to our form. I've been tracing people. You know, it's not so hard when you just sit in your dining room for 15 months. And I found our county librarian, Diane McDonald. She started this project with the county team and the librarian team, and she's in Wisconsin. And I talked to her on Sunday. In fact, I talked to her three times on Sunday, because two times we both cried. She is recognized in the dedication plaque along with our wonderful librarian, Sarah Denton, and on the team plaque that I'll speak about in a moment. Wow, how lucky are we to have such wonderful library staff and librarians. We have two of the best architectural firms in the universe in the room. Eric Wall is out there somewhere in the park. He was happy to be in the park. Eric, raise your hand. I don't know if Paris Allen is here. There he is. Hi, Paris. Hi, Eric. Let's woohoo them. Eric was with us, Kristen, that night, missing the Warriors game, but getting good input from the citizens that wanted uh, a library here. Thank you, Eric and Paris. Will Oren and his wife, I just met today, right there behind the fence. Will is the Bring It Home architect, along with Dewberry. I think we do have, because I think I saw our Madeline. Lena is there, and I'm not sure if Erica Nolis made it and her kids. Okay, so thank you to Dewberry. You guys are good. We have a recognition plaque for both of your firms and something for you individually that we'll give you at the end of the program. Thank you all. We have a great library team. I see a few of them here today. Sarah, you are my new pal. We compare on Teams meeting all the time how long our hair is and talk through personal and professional challenges to keep ourselves going. And it's just so wonderful working you, with you. I see my friend Thomas Caps in the back. Thomas, you do a great job. I don't see Brian Sontag today. I'm not sure if he's here, Sontag. And Diane Ramirez, our librarian. There you are, Diane, in Empire. Hooray! You have a new home. Susan Lilly is here with the library. Susan, thanks for all of your help. Thank you, Susan. We have something for you today as well. We've enjoyed our time with the library team. We loved our time with the sheriff's team. We love our time with every team, but the library team really adopted us into your family, and we thank you for that. So you see this big plaque over here, ladies and gentlemen. That's become one of our trademarks. It's the team plaque, and it'll hang inside forever along with the plaque honoring Mr. Bob and Jane Dittman and other recognition you'll see when you go through the front doors, a dedication plaque that reflects all of the elected officials and the MAC and the community and real, will allow generations in the future to stop and read it and see what happened on this beautiful day in 2021. But you know, they say there are dreamers and there are doers. And I often tell my son that I'm a dreamer and a doer and he often tells me that I need to pick one lane but I'm not very good at that. So the doers, remember Mr. Rogers talked about the kind people. They are kind and they are talented. And they made this dream a reality. The doers built it. I'd like to recognize the entire Rovalin team. The county has had the honor to work with your team, Ken, on many important projects. You're always competitive, you're always the low team and you always get the job done. And when I was talking to Supervisor Kies a couple of days ago, I think he might have once or twice in the past accused me of strong arming contractors to have savings, but I know Ken will tell you that never happened. And I know that um, Ken, you and your team, uh, you were really interested in building the Turlock Library. You'd done a lot of work in Turlock with the schools and you followed that. But we didn't get any proposals to build this wonderful Empire Library. So I called Bob, I called Ken, I called Brian, and you said, okay, we'll think about it. Thank goodness you thought about it, and you proposed, and you've just done a wonderful job. So ladies and gentlemen, this is Ken Wenham. He's the president and CEO of Roblin Contractors. <laughs> I 
I remember the first day I met you. <laughs> you flew to the Juvenile Commitment Center dedication, and um, I had a costume malfunction. And I'm glad that we stayed friends all these years. So it's so good to see you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. On time and under budget, for sure, in a pandemic, for sure. I hated to pick up my phone, Al, and to the Roblin team in the evenings because, sure enough, it was a positive COVID test on one of the job sites. But the care and safety and beauty of these working teams kept everyone safe, kept everyone informed, and we're very, very grateful, grateful for that. So I want to um, thank Bob Nomi, who couldn't be here today, and Brian, uh, Todd. Please give them our best, please. We um, are honored to work with you, and you should be very, very proud. In the Roblin team, Patty, Patty Esposito, she was awesome, Ken. And Ryan Israel, the cost guy, he and I went round and round and round and round, and I love him. And he did such a good job for us and you and our entire team. But somewhere in this park, and I'd like you to come forward, I know you probably won't listen to me if you're out there, are three gentlemen that we are forever grateful for. Tony Gonzalez, Char Charlie Huntley, and Daniel Tripp. Where are you guys? They're over under the tree. Let's give them a round of applause. Let me tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, these are the best of the best. And I've worked on probably three quarters of a billion dollars of projects, and it doesn't get any better than this Roblin team. Tony would go to the nursery and take pictures of trees and send them to Al and me. Daniel, when I would go at night, and I went most nights to check these libraries out after everyone went home safely, would park in his car just to make sure I was okay, even though I didn't get out of my car. And he wouldn't call the police if I came in a different car and looked like I was doing something suspicious. Daniel, Tony, and Charlie. Charlie, we haven't been together in the same place since February 22nd when we ground broke for the Turlock Library. But this man and these men have hearts of gold. And if you don't think you've met somebody who cares about the quality of their work and the quality of their relationships, Ken, it's those three gentlemen. And when you come inside, think this. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Daniel. Job very, very, very well done. So thank you. I know I'm glad you waved your hand because I didn't think you would. So thank you, guys. If we weren't uh, mostly standing, I'd ask everyone to give you a standing ovation. So your names are on the team plaque. Your firm's names are on the dedication plaque. I'd like to shout out to Joan Cox and Terry Rain, outside counsel, and our county counsel, Tom Bose. They all help us make things go, 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 and we like to go, go, go. So, well, you're probably saying, is she done yet? And I am almost done, and my cryometer's doing okay, too. But I want to tell you, I appreciate the lovely comments, but they're really really, for the county's team. And for years, decades, I've called them my team. Al, Teresa, Elsa, Cheryl, Andy, I wish you guys had come forward appropriately distanced, and you probably won't. You are my team. You are extraordinary. I love basketball, Manny. I never played basketball. I never could. I'm a big Warriors fan. Hope that's OK. But Michael Jordan once said, talent wins games, but teamwork and intelligence wins championships. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the championship team. Your names are on the plaque. I left something for you personally. You have mementos. And if I can go on and not cry, I'm going to tell you I've dubbed you the Super Six. Through ups and downs and spreadsheets, Teresa and Andy, spreadsheets and spreadsheets, how do we pay for these libraries? And the board, and the CEO was very gracious with the funding. Trials and tribulations, you always continue to deliver. I told each, all of you early this morning, Rick, I think I forgot, I'm going to read your names in a minute, and Al, I can see you, and Cheryl and Teresa. Elsa is out there somewhere, and is Andy here? There's, okay, hi guys. I told you early this morning that I am forever grateful for each and every one of you. I hope you will join everyone else who's been a part of this wonderful journey and be proud. You're kind, 
you practice stick to itiveness. You're determined, and if you have a doubt, just look behind me at this beautiful library that you were instrumental in creating. Generations to come will enjoy this library. Al Valencia from Empire, the day I met him, I knew he was going to be a great member of our team. Thank you, Al. Andy Johnson. Andy, you're back there somewhere. Wonderful, wonderful, caring individual. Rick Rodriguez, our inspector of record, key member of our team. We love you, Rick. Teresa Vanderveen. She makes us go, 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 and had a really big part in this event and this library. And we love the colors and the furniture inside. Tell Teresa, good job, really good job. Elsa Biedenwick, Elsa, I see you back there by the tree. You're wonderful, I love you, and you never give up. You don't stop, and I thank you for that. And Miss Cheryl Oaks, over here by the tree. Cheryl, you're a dear. You all put up with me still after all this time. I have something for you, as I said. So ladies and gentlemen, let's thank everyone who's been a part of this wonderful journey. Thank you. So now for the big event, like you might want to see the library, right? We uh, decided to stay safe. You're going to welcome come through the front door and you're going to go on a self-guided tour. And we have signs that ask you to sort of stay separate and you'll see the wonderful tribute to the Dittmans. You'll see the most often awesome children's area I think exists in the world. You'll see the vibrancy that this Empire Library will have, especially when it's full of children and their families. Don't forget to look at the 50s Twister Concrete. Special thanks, Charlie, Tony and Daniel, and Al for saving that. And Al, no, I promised you I wouldn't joke, tell everyone that we joked that you were gonna join the Twister, so I won't say that today. What I see, is he looking at me? What I see, my friends and neighbors, is the rich history of this community. My grandparents lived in the big white house right across the street on Yosemite Boulevard. And I would come here as a child from San Diego and know that this was a special, special place. I also see a rich future ahead. Thank you all for being with us today. Thank you all for making such a difference to this community we love and serve. We are grateful for all of you. Thank you.